Hello everyone, today I'll be talking to you guys about work experience and how it's important for you guys to organise as many placements as possible and I will also tell you the secret ways that not many people know about to get the placements that you want within medicine. Getting work experience is a very hazy area of the application process to medicine and I really disagree with this. There shouldn't be a limitation to someone being able to access work experience. You need to have work experience because you need to have a really good idea of what you're getting yourself into when it comes to going down the path of medicine. You want to develop that passion and desire to study medicine. And before I continue, I'd like to thank medify.co.uk for making this video possible. Make sure to go and check out their fantastic UK CAT and BMAT resources. The link is down in the description below. Why exactly am I insisting that you guys organise work experience? Now this advice applies to you if you're in year 11, year 12, or if you're in year 13 and planning on taking a gap year. If you're even younger than that, keep all of this information in your minds. It'll come very handy in the future. Back when I was in your position, I had my work experience organised rather early. A lot of my friends, however, had trouble finding work experience. Now, knowing people of course helps. If your mum's friend or your dad's friend is a surgeon or a doctor or a GP, that makes things a lot easier. But to be completely honest, most of the placements that I organised when I was applying for medicine were through the ways that I'll share with you later. They weren't through family connections, they were simply by using my head. I want all of you to go and see what medicine is really like. You really want to experience as much of it as possible. And trust me, work experience was probably one of the most fun parts of my school career. When it comes to writing a personal statement, when it comes to being interviewed at four different medical schools, you want to have opinions of medicine and you want to have experiences. Experiences relate to patient encounters. Experiences relate to when you were in theatre. Experiences could also relate to you having a chat with the porters of the hospital, talking to them and understanding even more about their role in the hospital. So these experiences, again, will be so valuable when it comes to writing a personal statement and when it comes to your interviews. A lot of people struggle to write their personal statement. Why? Because they don't have enough experiences. If you have four or five different work experience placements, from my experience and a lot of friends' experiences, it's so, so easy to write a decent personal statement. Now, when it comes to work experience, you want to make sure you have experiences in a few different fields. You don't just want to spend four weeks in neurosurgery. You don't just want two weeks in a GP surgery. You want to see a variety of different things. A lot of people ask me, is a GP placement important? Do I have to do it? I struggled and I didn't get one. With GP surgeries, especially local surgeries, there's the issue of confidentiality. And so we have to respect that. However, what I'm telling you is, you can see pretty much everything that you'll see at a GP surgery if you go to the day clinic department of the hospital. A GP placement isn't crucial. You'll see certain things, yes. You will see how GPs are super important when it comes to primary care. You'll see how they're the gateway to other parts of the health service. But you'll also see how they are an integral part of the community. Don't worry too much if you can't get a GP placement. On top of all the volunteering, the optimum combination of placements would be one A&E placement, one hospital ward placement and two surgical placements. This will give you the best insight into what medicine is really like. On top of this, you can do whatever you want. So now I've given you a rough thing about what you should be aiming for in terms of the quantity of work experience. Let's see how we can actually get it. Let's see how we can organize it. It's April now. It's late, but not too late to organize work experience for June, July, August, or even early September. And this is how you get all these placements sorted. You have to go to your local hospital's directory. On their website, you might have to do a bit of digging, but you'll find a directory of all the health professionals in the hospital. This includes all the surgeons and all the physicians and some of the researchers at that hospital. A lot of people don't know that these directories exist on the hospital websites. Now what you need to do is you need to sit down and think, right, which departments do I want to go into? within surgery. Do I like neurosurgery? Do I like orthopedic surgery? Do I like GI surgery? When it comes to spending time on wards, what sort of physician do you want to shadow? Would you like to shadow a respiratory physician? Would you like to shadow a gastroenterologist? There are so many different options. Let's say you want to get sorted a neurosurgery placement. 
Right, you go to the hospital website and you search for the neurosurgeons at that hospital. Now at a hospital, you'll usually have five or six consultant neurosurgeons. Each of these surgeons will have trained at different medical schools, they would have done their own research and, they'd ha and they'll have their own specialities. So what you need to now do is find two or three of those surgeons whose work you are quite interested in. Most surgeons will have a small bit of blurb and read that and try and understand what's going on. So find two or three surgeons that you're interested in. Now usually on this directory, under their profile, they'll have an email address as well. This might not be the consultants, it might be their secretaries. Now what you then need to do is write a very polite email. When you are emailing the surgeons or doctors directly or even to their secretary, you have to be so respectful. These people are at the top of their field. They've worked so hard to get there and they are so well respected. And so it's important that you give them that respect. And if you are really polite and if you do come across really nice, then it's only good for you because you're more likely to be accepted by them. Send them an email, a very polite email and make sure it's specific to their work. So it could go along the lines of, Dear Mr. X, having done research into spinal surgery, I came across your profile. Your work in XYZ seems fascinating, and as someone who is really interested in neuroscience and as someone who wants to study medicine in the future, it would be an absolute privilege to spend time with you, maybe a week in the summer, shadowing your work and your team. Then maybe write a bit more about why you're interested in medicine and what you wish to gain from this placement really politely ask whether they can accommodate you during those dates. If they can't accommodate you during those dates, they might suggest different dates. Now, if you send this to two or three surgeons, it's very likely that at least one of them will respond to you. And yes, this is the way you do it. Let's say you send out an email to 10 different surgeons and doctors, you might get four responding back to you. And make sure you coordinate everything well. Once the physician or surgeons happy to take you on, they'll put you in touch with the hospital's human resources team. The human resources team will then help you finalize the placement and they'll confirm all the details. And a lot of people usually think that the best way to shadow a surgeon or sh shadow a doctor at a hospital is to email the human resources team directly. Now the human resources teams usually have so much on their plate, they're so busy and it's so difficult for them to accommodate everybody for work experience. Therefore, if you email a surgeon or doctor directly and if you show an actual interest in their work, then these doctors and surgeons, they're nice people. They will want to inspire you further. They will want you to come and spend time looking at them treating patients. So the best way of doing it, once again, is to use the hospital directory. This is the secret, and hopefully you guys will get many work experience placements doing this. So another really good way of getting work experience, and this way is through attending lectures. If you go to a lecture and you are really interested in this doctor or surgeon's work, or even a researcher's work, Go to the front, I know it's embarrassing, but just go there. Dear Professor This, I was really interested in your work. I've learned about this at school and your insight into this was fascinating. Would it be possible for me to maybe come and visit your laboratory or would it be possible for me to come and shadow you um, and your surgical team? Most often they say yes. And so make sure you get their email address and that same evening go home and write them a lovely email saying thank you for the opportunity and try and get the placement sorted that way. You can even get placements that, you know, the Oxford University Hospitals or the Cambridge University Hospitals by simply being interested and being forward. They'll truly appreciate it if you come across the right way. So hopefully this advice has been helpful. Once again, I'd like to thank Medify.co.uk for making this video possible. And I truly hope that you guys get loads of work experience placements as a consequence of this. And if you haven't yet followed me on Instagram, please do. It's at Senthurin Kath. I'll put it down in the description below. Best of luck for your exams and I'll speak to you very soon. Take care guys.